Welcome back to Mountain Connections on this pioneer day. Right now, Lindsay Hargett of LK Cooking is joining us and she is making us some pie, which is ideal on pioneer day. Lindsay, thanks for being here. Hi, yes, thanks for having me. Excited to be back. It's great to see you, great to connect. I know you're not in studio, but almost the next best thing, connecting from your kitchen. How have you been doing? Yeah, we've been doing good. Lots of, lots of cooking just in different ways and you know, living different ways, but that's what we're all doing, so we've been good. Well, that's great to hear. So I'm looking forward to digging into some pie on Pioneer Day. What do you have for us? Okay, so we've got a, it's a triple berry custard pie. So a little background about me. I used to not like pie crust at all. I didn't like pie. I would eat the filling out. I was totally that kid. I grew up way picky. But then I, when I, I mean, obviously in culinary school, I had to eat pie crust. I'm like, okay, home is way better. But I just didn't love it. But this pie crust is like a hybrid between a pie crust and a pastry dough, which pastry dough is like sweeter. Think like a fruit tart kind of dough. This is like a hybrid of those two things. And it is so Good. So anybody that doesn't like pie crust out there like I used to not, this is the pie for you. It looks delicious, although I'm the opposite. I always wanted a pie instead of a cake for my birthday, but this looks like a really delicious option. My husband is the same way. He wants an apple pie for his birthday this year, too, and now I finally like it. Well, I have for years, but anyways, so we've got this pie crust that is like, so the reason it is not just like a pie crust, instead of just having eggs and water and flour, it has egg yolks to make it a little chewier, and it has sugar and vanilla to give it more actual flavor instead of just butter and flour. So um, so we've got that, and that's a pretty easy one to make. And then we're going to make the custard filling. So I've got some already pre-made here that we're gonna put into our pie crust in just a minute, because custard does have to sit up overnight. So I've got that ready for us, but I wanted to show you guys how to make it. So in this pot, I've got some milk that's been scalded, which is just where you bring it up to temperature, let it boil for a second, and then turn it off. Then we're going to do what's called tempering. So I've let it cool off just a little bit because we're going to be adding it to some egg yolks in here. And obviously, if you add hot milk to egg yolks, you're going to end up with scrambled eggs. So you let it cool for a little bit, and then we're going to slowly... Tempering is just where you add a little bit of hot liquid to something cold at a time and stir it a lot to add air bubbles and to just give it a chance to heat up slowly without scrambling. So that's what we're going to do now. And this is going to make our custard. So Actually, how long do you have to let the custard cool so that you're, I know you're tempering it, but what temperature are you going for? Um, so this, the finished custard needs to cool in the fridge probably for about six hours. So you could make this the morning of, you could totally make this like right now and have it ready for Pioneer Day, like your celebrations. Um, I usually make it the night before because usually in the morning I don't want to make pie. <laughs> so, but yeah, about six hours. Perfect. So you're going to add the eggs, but slowly, right? So you don't scramble them. Yes. So we're going, and actually I just remembered. So to the eggs, I've got some egg yolks and vanilla right here. We're also going to add a little bit of sugar. That's about a quarter cup of sugar. We're going to do three tablespoons of flour as well. The flour is going to help this thicken up into the thick custard that we want. So we've got that. We're going to add some cornstarch as well, another uh, another thickening agent. We're going to do two teaspoons of that. And then we're just going to do a little pinch of salt. So about a quarter teaspoon. And then this is, so we'll stir this together, and this is where we are adding our milk. Now, normally you want to do this very, very slowly, a little bit at a time once you add milk, but my milk has been cooling for a long time, which you can do if you're nervous about tempering. So if you just want to let it cool for 20, 30 minutes, then you can pour it in and you don't need to go as slow. So we're just whisking it in here. And like I said, my milk is completely cooled, so that's why it's fine that I'm adding fast. Normally, you would do like little tiny drips at a time until it comes up to a good temperature. But my milk is already pretty chill. So then what you're going to do, all you have to do is bring this mixture back into the pan and let it come to like a simmer. And it'll start to simmer, and you can see, like I said, the flour and the cornstarch will start to thicken it up. And then you just let it cool, put it in the fridge overnight, and then that's when you come up with 
uh, this mixture right here. The nice, thick, luxurious curd. I'll show you. It's just like nice and thick and creamy and delicious. So we've made our pie crust here, like I talked about, with our sugar and our vanilla and everything. So it just has extra flavor in it. And your custard is the first layer of this pie. So we're gonna add that in. We've got all of that. I use some homemade vanilla extract, which I really love bringing into the studio. And so it's got lots of little vanilla bean specks in it, which makes it delicious. Put that in there. And like I said, this is just the first layer of our pie. Give it like a good creamy base. So you're just spreading the custard around on the base of your pie crust. And after I made this pie crust, I chilled it for a little bit, then rolled it out. And then I formed it into my dish and I let it chill. You want to let it chill for at least 30, 45 minutes or so because it's, you know, full of butter and you want that butter to stay in chunks so you get flakiness. So I let this chill overnight. And again, I just have everything the night before and then bake it right before. So we've got all of that custard in the bottom. Now to make this kind of festive, I'm doing uh, triple berry. So I've got strawberries and raspberries. I should call triple berry because I have blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and strawberries. But to those, and you can do any combination of berries, but I've done all strawberries, raspberries, it's great. So we've got all of these berries, and we're gonna add some more sugar because obviously we're not going to healthy pie here. Got a quarter cup of sugar. We're gonna do two tablespoons of cornstarch this time so that that will help it as the strawberry or the berries like release their juices and mix with the cornstarch and bake. It will make it a little kind of syrupy, a little jammy instead of just regular fruit. It's kind of watery. So I'll add some of that in there. And I'm also going to add a pinch of salt to this as well. I add salt to all of my desserts, to all of my things, just because it helps bring out the flavor of things. Salt just gives it a little, little extra kick. So just a little pinch of salt? Yeah, just a little bit. We don't want it really salty. So you just stir those around, get everything all coated as a sugar and candy search so that we get that, like I said, almost jam, syrupy, like berry syrup consistency once it bakes. And then I'm just going to pour this over the top of our custard. And I'll lift this up after to show you guys because it just looks amazing unbaked. Yeah, it already looks beautiful. Mm. So, like I said, we've got all of our berries in here. You can see some of the custard peeking through. So, all of that, you can see all the layers. Now, pie can be pretty intimidating to some people, I think. Um, all the different components, obviously, and the pie crust itself, this baking, you know, in and of itself can be a little intimidating, but it really, really is so simple. And so I wanted to show you guys just like a simple, we'll see what we come up with. I was gonna do a lattice pattern. I don't know if I saved quite enough pie dough to turn it into a lattice pattern, so we'll just see. So I rolled out, I saved some of my pie dough, and I rolled it out and I, I cut it into strips. Now you can do the little strips, like little thin strips, but the thicker you do them, the less latticing you have to do. And it actually looks really impressive to have some of the big strips. So I've rolled them out and I've cut them and I'm just going to set them so you can see kind of how thick I've got them here. And I love, love just like some thick pie strips on my pie. And I'm just going to layer some of them, break off some of the ends. Let's see. So I'll probably do like three by three. So super, super simple. You're not doing a bunch of little tiny lattice braiding going on, but so I'm going to lift this part up and have this strip go on top of a couple and then I'll lay that one back over. Then I'll layer this next one underneath these two. So you can see I'm just kind of folding it up. Okay. And then this last one, you can see how I'm just kind of like folding them up and over when it's their turn to go either over or under. And then, so you can see there's only a couple little strips in there, 
But really, like, it looks so impressive because it looks like you've you know, done this fancy pie. And then all you do, so you can see on my pie, you can see all the overhang of that crust. You want that there because that's going to help you make that crimp. So you just kind of fold it all up and it's going to look really rough at first, okay? But you want a lot of pie dough up here so that once you start doing the little like knuckle folding, as is, you know, pretty tradition with pie, you will have plenty of pie dough to do the crimping. So you can see I'm kind of breaking off some over here when it's like way, way too much. But, and because this has sugar in the pie crust and the pastry dough, it's really yummy to like snack on. It's not just flour and butter and eggs. So see, I'm just kind of really roughly folding this over and it's gonna look, you know, kind of rough for the first minute, but I'll show you a couple, you know, of the, of the folds and you'll believe that you can do it too because it is just, it really is super simple. I have to say so, there is nothing rough looking about that pie at all. It is beautiful and I'm sure it's gonna taste delicious. Lindsay, where can we get more information about you, your cooking classes, also your personal chef and find your recipes? So you can find more about me on my website at lkcooking.com and also I'm a lot more active on my Instagram just at lkcooking. Um, I'm also doing a bake sale for a good cause. You can find all the details on my Instagram stories right now. Um, so I'm doing a bake sale tomorrow. So we're actually on Friday today. I'm doing it today. Um, who knows what day it is anymore in Corona times, but, um, so you can find all the details on my Instagram stories and you can come, you know, purchase some baked treats for a good cause. And you might even be able to snag a piece of this pie. <laughs> Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for showing us that pie. It looks, again, it looks scrumptious. And what more could you want on Pioneer Day than a beautifully baked, yummy pie? You're going to want to find out more about Lindsay Hargett online. Also follow her social media where she'll have different things all day today. So thanks again, Lindsay, for joining us here on Park State Television. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Good to see you. All right. We've got more coming up. We'll be back right after this.